Over the years, MS Teamworks has shared different perspectives on MS from patients, care partners, family members, and healthcare professionals. Guided by our mantra, I have MS, I have a team, I have a future. We are proud to share new messages of hope and inspiration with the MS community. I have MS. I'm on your team. I have a future. My name's Jim Johnson, and I've been living with MS for almost 10 years now. I was diagnosed with MS almost 10 years ago, and it was very, very hard for me. It was like a punch in the gut when the doctor leaned over and said, sir, you have MS. I was just in denial. I couldn't believe that I had this. I didn't know anything about it. I was very scared for myself and my family. I just didn't know what to do. Um, I was just, I had my wife with me, but I felt very, very alone at the time. It was it, something I just didn't know how to handle. I wasn't prepared for it. And I was out of work for about two weeks and my boss calls me up and says, hey, I need you to talk to this guy about MS. I was living in denial with myself. I wasn't really ready to talk to anybody, but he's the boss, so I said, okay, who do you want me to talk to? He says, my father. He's had MS for 30 years. And I thought, oh, okay, I'll call him. So I called Wayne up, told him who I was. He says, oh, great, good to talk to you. What kind do you have, kid? I'll never forget that, that's the first thing out. What kind do you have? I told him I had relapsing remitting. And he says, ah, that's the best kind you can get. If you could choose any type of MS to get, that was the best one. And after about a five minute conversation with him, I had a new feeling about life. I felt I had some community, some friends out there that have lived with it. And then his wife got on the phone and said, now if your wife ever needs to talk to anybody, I know all about MS because I've lived with Wayne for 30 years. So if you have any questions, you call me, we'll talk. You don't have to talk to your husband or mine. It's just you and I will talk. So it was, it was pretty exciting to have that instant bond all of a sudden. I lost my buddy Wayne two months ago. When Wayne passed, uh, I was very sad. Uh, his, his son called me, my boss's son. He called and said, hey, we lost dad last night. And I had just talked to Rod the day before and I was gonna try and go see Wayne that weekend, but I was gonna go on Sunday and he went on a Saturday. Pretty devastating loss for me, and I didn't know him all that well or for all that long. Um, I visited him a couple times when he was in the VA hospital. Uh, he just always had a smile on his face. And he said, Jim, us with MS, we just do things slower. You know, you can do the same things, but it's slower and it might be real slow. It can take you hours to do something you used to do in minutes, but you can still do it. So don't worry about it. Life's good, you know, believe in yourself, believe in your family, they'll take care of you. My relationship with Wayne and how it affected me living with MS, oh, it, it just a, a good thing. I mean, I had a new outlook on life. I had terrible depression when I first got it and Every time I'd feel like I was getting a little depressed, I'd think about Wayne. I'd had it for a couple months, and Wayne lived with it for 30 years, 40 by the time he passed. So, you know, he drove, he had a, a van that had hand controls because he couldn't use his feet, he was in a wheelchair. And I thought, man, you know, I still get up every morning and go to work, I'm just slow, you know? and. Everybody realized that Jim's not Jim anymore because he just moves slower. Everything else about him is still, still good, still a smarty pants and still likes to have a good time, but he just, I just go slow. And, you know, I used to be a umpire, uh, ASA umpire, and, you know, the girls I umpired were very good athletes. Some have gone on to college, play D1 ball, and you had to be able to move. And I just couldn't do it anymore. And, you know, that was, that was the hardest thing. And then thinking about my daughters, am I gonna be able to walk them down the aisle? And I've walked one and I'm walking another one in August and I've got three daughters, so I'm pretty excited about that. The MS Society has helped me a great deal. Things like this interview help get the word out. You know, it's gonna be all right and we're gonna find a cure. 
I have MS, MS doesn't have me. When I first diagnosed with MS, I was very depressed. And my family rallied around me. My daughters came over every day. Um, they'd bring me my favorite Mexican food and I'd sit in bed because the first three months I was bedridden and it was very, very depressing. I didn't know what to do, but they were always there. Dad, it's gonna be okay. My wife was there at all my doctor's appointments. My kids went to my doctor's appointments. They go to my MRIs. They go with me to, for my cognitive tests. And knowing that I have that kind of support really, really helped me out because I knew I wasn't in this battle by myself. I knew my family was there and my friends, they all gathered around. I got cards, I got phone calls. You know, don't worry, we're there, we'll help you. Anything you need, let us know. And that really helped me get through those first three months. Because I'm telling you, it was very difficult for a very active person to all of a sudden be in bed. And I'm 10 steps from our bathroom at home and that was a five minute walk. You know, just trying to get out of bed in the morning was almost impossible. I hated it. You know, why me? You know, you get that pity all of a sudden. There's people out there that want to reach out and help you, and they did, so now I want to give back. I want, I still have little bouts every now and again. You know, on Sundays, it's kind of, it's the start of the week, and I'm a little depressed, not bad. I used to be really, oh, terrible. I, I hated it, but now, you know, hey, you're not f feeling good today, are you, Dad? Well, no, I'm a little, oh, don't worry about it. Come on out, let's get the barbecue going, we'll have something to eat. You know, they'll come over if I need them. They're all adults now, but if I need them, I call them, they're at the house. However long it takes to travel from where they live to my house, they're there and they'll stay as long as I need them. You know, and just being able to see my kids, that cheers me up. Man, I love to see my kids. I got three beautiful daughters and beautiful wife. They're there for me. I, I, you know, you can't ask for more. You find out who your real friends are and who really loves you. And I, I think it's great. You know, it's kind of a, a blessing to have MS. I don't like to say that because it's not, but when you see everything around you and all the people that want to help people with MS, you, you become part of another family. Tame Big Jim was the team my daughter got started because she works for the MS Society. And she was head of, she's the manager of Bike MS. But she goes, Dad, we get all these events. There's four of them. And we want you to start a team. And I'm going, oh, wow, okay. So I got my brothers and my sisters and my uh, brother-in-laws and their families. They came the first year. And I'm thinking, man, I'm watching them walk in. All these people got shirts on. I go, oh, we got to get some shirts for these guys. And my wife goes, yeah, that'd be a good idea for next year. Then I see all these people walking down and they got white shirts on. And I go, man, those look pretty good. Hey, that's my brother Tom, my sister Nancy. And all the rest of the family all got these white t-shirts on that say Big Jim. And they got a boot print on it. And I thought, man, this is cool. It just evolved after that. We went from raising, I don't know, 500 or $700 first year to 10,000 one year. And last year, I think we were able to get up to 6,500. And I'm not sure on the amount, but we have 65 or 70 members of Team Big Jim. And it's all these people I either coached or worked with or family and uh, girls from my sister, from my daughter's sorority have come out in force. I mean, there's like 15 of them there. And we all go down to Gasworks Park and that's the last rest stop before you go back. And they accuse me of being the mayor of Gasworks Park because I walk around and talk to people and cheer them on as they're coming in. It, it's just a good thing. And you see all the support. There's a band there. They come every year. They don't charge the society for it. Uh, there's motorcycle clubs that come and help with traffic. And it's just everybody working together. Um, and it's a great thing. I just have, walk is one of my big things every year. I've been really fortunate. I went to walk and then I went to bike and I've been to the Dinner of Champions. I've been to Olympia to uh, talk about MS and help with medicine and the cost of it. Uh, 
just anything they do, they'll give me a call and I'm on board. I, you know, this is great because there's a whole office full of people that are willing to help me and I've been able to help others because I pick up the phone and call my daughter, hey, I need some information on this. This guy's daughter or girlfriend's got MS and I need someone to call. Here's the navigator number and you call me if you have any problems. So it's really nice. It's nice to be able to give back and help others like Wayne did for me. He helped me. I want to help others. I want to give back to those that have given to me. Throughout the United States, there's many MS societies. I'm here in Seattle with the Greater Northwest chapter, but they're all over the place. And they've got walk events, they got bike events, they have the MS Navigator, so if you need help navigating through all this stuff, because it'll be new to you when you get it and you're gonna be overwhelmed, but they're there to help you, talk you down, so to speak, and just make you feel more comfortable. They can, there's resources there that I never knew even existed, but it's all over the country they have these and they're more than glad to listen to whatever you have to say. If you wanna go for a walk uh, on a walk team, you can sign up there, wherever you live in the United States. Um, they have bike teams, they have dinner of champions, all the events that you'd ever wanna to go to are on the MS website. I have MS, MS doesn't have me. MS doesn't have any of us, we have MS. It's tough and there's no cure yet, but through videos like this and other things, they're gonna find a cure. Might not be in my lifetime, but they're gonna find a cure and you'll beat it. Don't worry about it, just keep doing what you're doing. Have a great attitude about what you're doing and don't worry about anything because you can't do anything. Make sure you talk to your doctor, explain everything to them, how you're feeling, what's going on. If you need to call them up before your next appointment, call them up, talk to them. Don't be shy, be your best advocate, okay? Because other people don't know what's going on. So you have to explain what's up. And I'm telling you, that'll help you.